Welcome to Living in Linux, week number three. Now, if you're not familiar with my Living in Linux series, it chronicles me living in the Linux world exclusively for one month. And every week I give you my impressions and thoughts. Now, the only exception to this is that I actually edit these videos in Windows. But other than that, my entire computing world is me using Ubuntu Linux. So without any further ado, let's get to it. Now you're probably wondering why you're looking at two monitors and a port replicator. Well, we're gonna kick off this week with me trying the port replicator for the very first time and seeing how it works with my laptop. Now the monitor on the left is hooked up with a VGA connection. The monitor on the right is hooked up with a DVI connection and that's because the port replicator has only one VGA and one DVI port on it. Now you might also be wondering why I'm set up on the floor. Well, this is going to be my new studio up here in my attic. And I refinished the floor up here, and it's gonna take a little bit of work still up here, but this is where I'm gonna be filming my videos from here on out. Now, the one thing of interest is that on this laptop, the laptop itself doesn't have a DVI port on it. It only has a VGA port on it. So I don't even know if this dual monitor thing is gonna work. Now, reading through the comments of week two and week one of my Living in Linux experiment, I just want to preface this by saying this is my experience using Linux with this hardware. And the reason I highlight hardware in this situation is because it's a big part of my experience. Now, of course, you can always put Ubuntu or whatever flavor of Linux you want on better hardware. It just so happened that I'm using this Dell Latitude D630 in my experiment. So I have the port replicator plugged into both monitors and I have the port replicator plugged into the wall. You can probably see the power light on the right hand top side of the port replicator. Of course I have both monitors plugged into the wall and I have a wireless keyboard, this one right here, plugged in to the port replicator. So in theory, I'm just going to dock the Dell Latitude into the port replicator and be able to use it with my wireless keyboard and mouse. So I have the Dell Latitude here and it's powered up, but it's closed down, so it's in sleep mode. And on the back here, there's a port that I have to match up on the port replicator to plug it in. So this is my first time actually doing this, so I don't know it's going to be an easy process or not. I assume it's going to be easy. Now, there's actually a lock on the right-hand side of the port replicator, which will lock your laptop in. Make sure it's unlocked so that, you know, the latches move so you should be able to plug it in. So, like I said, this is my first try at it, so let's see if it's an easy process. Okay, looks like I plugged it in. And we have a green light now on the port replicator. So I've got my wireless mouse and keyboard on the ready here. And you can probably see the power light pulsating here. I think I just have to press that to wake the computer. And it should pop up on the screen. Okay, there we go. We actually have both screens working right now. Now, I have an error message here, which says system program problem detected. I get that now and again. Right now, I'm running Ubuntu 12.10. I will be upgrading to Ubuntu 13.4 shortly. So let's see, as you can see, I have the mouse going on the right screen. Let me see if I can move it over. Okay, I moved it over to the left one. I'm gonna hit cancel here. Let me open up a web browser here on the right screen. So on the left screen, let me try and open up Opera here. Okay, there you go. Two separate browsers. This is actually very cool. I didn't think I was going to be able to get two different monitors working with this laptop. Now, for the record, this laptop is not a beast, as you would expect. It's older hardware, but it is fairly decent. It is, let's see what we have here. We have, it's a Core 2 Duo. I think it's 2.0. It's 2.2 gigahertz per core and two gigs of RAM. So it's not a beast, but definitely capable of basic tasks. Now, if you're into video editing or games, of course, this laptop is not for you, but I've been using it for the past three weeks as my daily driver, and it's very capable for what I use it for. 
Now, I'm really glad I've been doing this Living in Linux experience with business hardware because I've come to realize consumer laptops really aren't for me. I like the matte screens. I like the battery options where you can actually put higher capacity batteries and multiple batteries in one machine. I like this docking station. I think it's a great idea. And these monitors you could actually use as a USB hub. You just have to make sure you plug a USB cord from the monitor to the computer. Now one thing I do want to try on this real quick is opening up the laptop lid and seeing what happens. Now, right now, I can use the mouse or the touchpad from the laptop to control the mouse on the screen. And I believe I can switch back to the screen. There's a button next to the power button over here, which will enable me, I believe, to switch to using the screen on the laptop. There we go. So now instead of having the two monitors here, I have one monitor here on the laptop and then one secondary monitor here, which is very cool. So let me close that back down and let's see if we get the two monitor situation going here again. Should take a second, unless it goes into sleep mode. There we go. So the next thing I want to try out is actually using the monitor as a hub. The monitor has several USB ports on it, at least I think four of them, but you have to plug a cord from the monitor into the computer, as I mentioned before. And I also want to cover some of the things I discovered this week in Linux. And I also want to try and fix the Chrome confetti problem that you see on some YouTube videos. And some of you guys have given me some very useful comments in the previous videos that I've done how to fix that. So we're going to try and fix that in this video and cover a couple of other things. Okay, as I mentioned before, both of these monitors can be used as USB hubs. They both have four USB ports on them. So what I did during the break there is I plugged in the left monitor, which is off screen here. I plugged the left monitor in to the port replicator via a USB cord and now I have the wireless keyboard and mouse receiver plugged into one of the left monitor's USB ports and it works just fine. So it's actually another cool feature of these business products here. But again, we're going to focus on the left screen and we're going to try and attack the confetti problem. Now between this video and the previous video, there have been updates to Ubuntu. In fact, the updates come very frequently. And as it so happens, the confetti problem has been minimized incredibly since we last touched on this problem. But it still exists a little bit. So I'm going to increase the size here of this video. And you probably can't see it that well, but the confetti still exists very, very little bit here. There's some green dashes here and there. Again, much better than it was before. Just to get you up to speed, I have four browsers on this machine. I have Chromium, which is the open source variant of Chrome. I have Firefox that comes with Ubuntu. I have Chrome, and then I have Opera. The confetti problem was not in Firefox and not in Chromium. And it wasn't in Opera either. So the problem was basically isolated to Chrome, which is unfortunate because that's the browser I use the most. But then the problem started to show up in Chromium. But after a couple of updates, it's been minimized and it's the same in both Chromium and Chrome. Now it's a good thing this channel has a lot of very informed viewers because some of you guys are a little more experienced with Linux than I am and gave me a suggested solution to this problem. So we're going to try it out. And I actually have over on the left monitor, I have a suggestion from Tux1313 on how to fix the confetti problem. Now this solution was suggested to me by several other commenters and I want to thank each and every one of you for suggesting the solution. Okay, the first thing in his instructions says install the flash plugin from the software center. I assume he means that it's already installed because I have Adobe Flash plugin pulled up here from the software center. It shows that it's installed and it works on Firefox, Chromium, and uh, other programs. 
So I'm just going to X out of here. And the next step, he says, is go to Chrome colon backslash backslash plugins backslash. And this brings up all of your plugins on the Chrome browser here. So what he wants me to do is disable the Pepper Flash version of Flash because there's supposedly two instances of Flash here. Now, I don't know if anything has changed since he gave me these instructions, but the only instance of Flash I have is here, which says Adobe Flash Player, and it says two files. So that's probably what he's talking about, but if I disable this, I disable both. So I just don't know how to separate the two. But as I said, let's bring this up to a full version here. The confetti is very small, and strangely enough here, the video I have pulled up is my most popular video of all time, with over 270,000 views as of the filming of this video, um, is setting up dual monitors on one desktop PC, which I have just done here tonight. So, let me just play a little bit of this. Let me put the sound down, mute it actually, and fast forward it a bit. So you can see a little bit of the confetti. I don't know if you can see it, but you probably can. It's almost like an old video where you would see, uh, or an old movie where you would see flashes of, of dust and whatnot on the screen. So I'm in Chrome, which is the major offender on this. Let's switch to Chromium, where I have the same thing brought up. And let me play the video here and mute it. And strangely, it has a much different format here, but let's play that anyway. And actually, I don't see any of the confetti here. So in closing, as far as the confetti problem, it seems like it's going to be something that's going to work itself out. It's not nearly as bad as it was in the past, so it's not even annoying, and it's only in Chrome and not anymore in Chromium. Now, going in line with the fact that some of you guys are just very knowledgeable about Linux, and I'm, you know, I've dabbled for years, I've dabbled, but I've never actually seriously used it as my main operating system until now. And I do appreciate those of you who are very welcoming to the Linux community. I really appreciate that. You guys have been very helpful to me. Of course, there are always going to be people who get angry at the drop of a hat, regardless of what operating system they're on or what community. But to those of you who are really cool about it, again, I can't thank you enough. Now, going in line with the fact that a lot of you guys have been really cool and giving me tips along the way, some of you guys said that the version of Ubuntu that I'm using isn't the most stable. So I should go with 13.4, and when I'm able to do that, I will update. And I'm probably going to end this series of videos. There's going to be five series, five weeks, in this Living in Linux series. And the last one, I probably will be transitioning to Ubuntu 13.4. And you guys have told me that 13.4 is going to be much more stable. I have realized that this version of Linux that I've been using, or this version of Ubuntu that I've been using, has crashed on me several times. And generally, I've kind of isolated it to the fact of when an update comes. So a lot of the times I will use this computer and then shut the lid, but not shut the computer down, just shut the lid and, you know, do something else and then come back to it and open the lid and bring it up from a sleep mode. When I do that, I find that just before an update, before it's going to download the files for the update, it'll crash. And what I mean by the crash is I just get a black screen and the mouse doesn't move or anything like that. So in order for me to get everything back up and running, I have to hard restart it. So I have to hold the power button down, shut it down, and then bring it back up. That happened, I don't want to say frequently, but it happened a handful of times, but it doesn't, it ha I haven't encountered it in the past couple days, and I have had a couple of updates. So that might be something that was flushed out in one of the updates. So I'll keep you posted on that if I have any crashing problems. Now, as I touched on before, when you're used to using your operating system, you have your programs and everything that you like to use, and then moving on to a different operating system, sometimes things have to change. One of those things is Netflix. Now, I was a naysayer back in the day, in the beginning, and I thought, eh, who wants Netflix? And then once I got it, 
I've been hooked on it, and I hardly ever watch regular TV anymore. If I have something on in the background, it's Netflix. So I love Netflix, and that's one of the things that you're not going to be able to watch on Linux right now. Well, of course, something like a Roku box runs Linux, and you can watch Netflix on that. But as far as a desktop operating system, you can't watch Netflix on Linux. Now, there's probably some workarounds and whatnot, but for a general user who just wants to go to Netflix.com, at this moment it can't be done. And the reason for that is because Netflix uses Silverlight, which is a Microsoft video codec, and it's not supported in Linux. But the good thing is, is that Silverlight is going to be on its way out. So Netflix is moving towards, I believe, HTML5. So sometime in the near future, you're going to be able to watch Netflix on Linux. But as of right now, that's something that you can't do. You can go to the Netflix website and you can browse and you can change your queue. But as far as watching anything, it can't be done. So this is what happens if you try and play Netflix on this computer it gives you this error message. It will only play on Windows, Mac, and Chrome OS. No Linux. Now, one thing I encountered with this computer that you can encounter on any computer is that I had to reinstall the printer. As it turned out, I was printing something and the printer ran out of paper. I didn't realize that. I shut the lid on the laptop, put it to sleep. The next day I opened it up and tried to print and a combination of the printer not having enough paper in it and then me putting the computer to sleep made the printer not work anymore. So I had to uninstall the printer and reinstall it. Real simple process. And it just goes to show you that it can happen on any operating system. Even though I love my Canon printer, printers are still printers and they can be temperamental now and again. Now one of the things that I actually found was an advantage of using Chromium was for my day job I have to print from my own home printer. I have to print out a lot of stuff. Not a whole lot of stuff, but I have to print generally every day. So I found that I was running out of black ink on my Canon printer. Now, through Chrome, if I wanted to print, it would just give me the option of printing. And if I was low on black ink, it would print the page up, but I couldn't really see what I wanted to see on there because the black ink was almost gone. The interesting thing on Chromium was, is that I could actually choose an option. Now, I don't know if I could actually do it in here. But let me see if I could print this and just show you. So the print screen is slightly different in Chromium. And as you can see here, I have my Canon MX410 printer selected here. And you have an option on these tabs up here for color. So if I select color, the normal print job would just be RGB color. And if I chose that, it would use the black ink and then the color ink. The color ink would be used for obviously the colors and the black ink would be used for the black. But if I choose one of these last two selections down here, which is CMYK or KCMY, it would only use the color ink, and the color ink would obviously be used for the color, and it would also be used to make the black ink. So it wouldn't use the black ink at all, it would just use the color ink. So that was an interesting little thing that probably very niche, and most of you, I mean, most people don't print anyway, so I don't know if it's gonna help you guys out. But in my case, if I couldn't get to the store right away to get a new print cartridge, I could just use the CMYK and the KCMY selection here to get my print jobs done. Now, this Dell laptop doesn't have an SD card slot in it, but it does have a PC card slot in it. So what I ended up doing was I bought a PC card, and there's going to be an individual video on this, but I bought a PC card that has an SD card adapter. And I don't know if you can see it because the lighting in here is so dim, but like I said, there's gonna be a, a separate video on this. But I bought this to plug into the Dell. Now, one of the problems I encountered with using this was Ubuntu would recognize it, and I could see that there was an SD card in there. But if I wanted to send, say, a picture off of there, 
Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't work. Sometimes it would just freeze up, sometimes I could attach it to an email. So that was a little bit intermittent and something that you're probably not going to encounter unless you're dealing with older hardware like I am here. Now, one of these adapters, a USB to SD card adapter, which I've had for many years, which has an SD card in there right now, works just fine. Just plug it right into one of the USB ports and you can attach pictures from an SD card all day long. Not a problem. The only advantage, of course, of the PC card is that it actually fits all the way into the computer and this sticks out. Now, again, to remind you guys, this piece of hardware is something I purchased explicitly to try and live within Linux. So I wouldn't have to dual boot or anything like that. I'd have a machine that was dedicated with Ubuntu on it. And of course, you can get much more modern hardware and have Ubuntu or again, your flavor of Linux running at a faster speed. And if that's your thing, I definitely recommend doing that. And I actually will be doing that. I will be looking at some higher powered machines because I do want to continue past this five weeks. Now there's one thing I really wasn't aware of going into this, and that is the Dell versus Lenovo rivalry. Well, just to let you know that I'm not a partisan in this, I don't care what you use, whatever you prefer you should go with. I did also purchase a used Lenovo business laptop that I am considering using as well. The only drawback of this Lenovo is that I didn't realize it, but after I purchased it, again, it's another laptop without a multi-touch trackpad on it. But I just wanted to put that out there because I'm not partisan. Buy whatever you want. I'm not trying to push any agenda on you guys. I'm just a guy sharing his experiences with you guys. And that's what it comes down to. That's what this entire living in Linux experience is. So week three is down. Again, I'm really enjoying my experience so far. I really like the fact that this port replicator works. That's a pleasant surprise for me because again, the computer, the laptop doesn't have a DVI port on it. So I thought I'd only get one monitor to work, but two monitors working, that's just really cool as far as I'm concerned. So that's gonna do it for this week. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.